Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, the Crafter. And today I'm here with something that's a bit long overdue for me personally. Um, and I thought it'd be good to take you along on the journey, especially if you're someone who has never seen this done before. Um, what I'm going to show you is I'm actually going to make myself a new art journal. I'll explain what sort of art journal as I go along. Um, and I'm going to do it in Midori style, uh, which means that the signatures are not sewn into the cover. Now, this is nothing new. Um, it, I've seen umpteen other mixed media artists do them. I mean, I, th I think Darcy's done one within the last six months. I know Gaelo Costanelli's done them. Basically, it's nothing new, but it is going to be something I want to do. Now, I like to art journal and blue book. I mean, just looking around here, I've currently got probably 11 journals on the go. Everything from glue books to coloured glue books to um, collage books to... You get it, there's a lot of them. Now, it's probably going to take me the best part of my life to finish off any one of them because they're all going. And I, I because I do a lot of different um, interests and artistic endeavours, I like to have all of them so when the mood takes me, I can pull that journal out or that book out and work on it. I get easily bored if I stay with one project or one one skill set, which is why I do lots of them. So anyway, um, I put a lot of work into my art journals and I love them. However, in there lies my problem. Um, I know I always say, and I've said to umpteen people, and I think umpteen other people have said it as well, an art journal is somewhere where you can experiment you can try new things out. Well, for me, I tend to be a little scared of messing up my art journal if I work so hard on it. And some of them are well over a year or two old. So I've got nowhere to really just dump ideas or play or just do random stuff. And I don't want to buy a new art journal because then I'll treat that as the monetary value of the journal when actually I just need to think of it as a journal. So I thought, right, let's let's change this up a bit somehow. So we're going to be this is going to be two parts within the one video. So I've got this cover. Now, this used to be I think it was a big book on butterflies, to be honest. It's what I would call a coffee or a, a coffee table book or a resource book. It had been gutted. This book's got to be about two or three years old, this cover. And it's been sat in my drawer. So what I've done is um, I put these little bits of um, coloured gel papers in the corners purely because, as you can see, the corners of this cover are already getting dinked up. So I'm going to put some metal corners on to protect it. Um, I've also, there was a split here in the cover. So I put some book binding tape on it and I've put some matte medium on here and I put um, a gel print over the thing just so the cover has got something on it. I like things in my art room to be inspirational and reflect my love of colour. Um, I also put, I don't even think you, you're not even going to see it. There's a little bit of black tape there, which I glued down because, as I said, it, it had a split in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, finish this off so that it's ready for the pages and then we'll go on to the pages. Um, I've done a bit of prep ahead of time, obviously, is glue this and glue the corner pieces purely because um, I want to film this all in one day and I wanted things to be dry to do it. So when you look at a gutted book, this here is usually only that's a thin piece of card. It had a bit of paper over the top, which I tore off because it was a bit loose anyway. It's only really the thickness of whatever they've covered this in. OK, so for what I want to do is I want to support it a bit more. So I've got a bit of card. This is like cereal box card. As you can see, it's really thin. However, I've cut it to be the size of the spine, but not covering where the spine folds up. OK, so we've got we've got that gap down there, which is the flexible bit of the hinge. Now, I'm going to stick this down immediately because I need this to be dry before I can do the next bits. This is just PVA glue. Um, I'm not sewing into this spine, so it doesn't need to be hugely um, in contact, but I want it there for integral strength, should we say. Right, so I put on the PVA glue and I'm just going to use my fingers 
just to wipe it around a bit. Now, we're going to be doing more to reinforce the spine, not because it's a weak spine, but purely because um, the type of journal I want this to be, which is going to be very experimental, it's going to be very much a not carriage art journal. I intend to do messy techniques in this. I intend to be experimental. It's going to be pulled out and put back in the shelf a lot. So I'll just put that down here. Make sure it's right in the middle. Give it a good press down. So that's stage one. Um, so yes, I want this to be a journal that I have no fear of destroying. Um, also, I'm making this as an art journal cover so that the signatures that go in here are not going to be sewn into the spine. They're going to be removable. So this could last me years and I just keep replacing, replacing the signatures. Right, well, this is just gripping and setting from it. I think what we should do next is put the corners on. Now, I've been asked where I get my corners from, my book corners. I just pick them up on eBay or Amazon. I usually put in a search for um, book corners or book corner protectors. I like these ones the best, um, where they've got this where you squeeze it and it clamps onto the book. Some of them actually have a specific width here, which then has to match the width of your um, covers. I like these, as I said, because I can squish them to fit any size. Um, I What I tend to do is I put in um, book corners metal in the search options, and then I go through as many options to find out which is the best buy. Because sometimes you'll get a pack of four of these, but then if you keep scrolling down, you might find there's a pack of 20 of them for the same price. So always shop around. And if you see them in bulk and you're someone who makes journals, just buy them. Um, I tend to use, this as sort of um, a brass or a bronze type of color. I did buy a batch of silver ones once, and I think I've only ever used one one set of corners. So for me personally, I just go for something that looks a bit antique -y. I mean, I found some of the gold ones are a bit too bright as well. So anyway, right, let's just get these stuck on. So I'm going to put a piece of kitchen paper or kitchen towel under my corner, and this is purely to protect my mat. And I'm going to use Fabri-Tac. And I'm using Fabri-Tac because it's it's a bit bit of a strong glue. It'll do what I want. Now I'm going to put a line of it on the inside of here. I would if it was coming out. Come on, you out you come. Now I'm just putting a little line of it in there. I don't want to flood it. I don't really want it to ooze out. And to be honest with you, what's the worst thing that's going to happen if it's not secured properly? I'll just re-glue it. So I'm pushing that as much as I can and I'm pushing it down with my thumbs. And once I've used that, I've got a small pair of pliers here. Now, some people, when they do their journals and I'm just crimping it down as tight as I can, um, will put a piece of felt or a piece of cloth between the pliers and their corners. I don't mind. I mean, I don't need to protect or look after my corners. I'm literally putting them on there to save my journal cover. See, already that looks better and it's going to be more robust. So bear with me while I just quickly do the others. And then we will get back to working. Why isn't this coming out? So it's a brand new bottle. It should be flooding out of here. So I'm going to do the same to all of these. So, um... Oh, a bit of oozed out there and it oozed out there. Maybe I did put in more than I thought. Um, so I'm going to be using um, just regular brown paper in here. And I'll, I'll go through the resource I'm using. I'll go through the whole technique, the whole thing. Don't worry. However, um, you could do this with anything you saw fit. You could do a true junk journal version of an art journal and actually just go through and put any junk mail or whatever you want in here. This, the whole thing of this for me is I'm trying to recycle things that I've not really spent money on so that the value of this for me is not financial. And that's purely because I know if I've saved up and spent money on buying a good journal, the last thing I want to do is ruin it. Um, 
because we know that equipment and that is, is not cheap nowadays. And I like to look after my stuff. However, if I know this is something that is not overly expensive, or in this case, not expensive at all. I think the most expensive thing I'm going to be using is the glue and the book corners. The rest is just things that are lying around in my um, stash of stuff. And we all know we've got stuff lying around in our stash and we're all endeavouring to use it up. Right, there you go. Let's slip this one on here. Give it a good push, push over the corner. So um, the glue is there to basically just secure it in place. Um, as I said, what's the worst thing that can happen? It actually comes off and I just glue it back on again. Some of them do have little nails put through when you've got thicker, um, or try to say you've got thicker covers. I've never done that, but there you go. So I don't mind about the cover being a little bit Let's get the excess glue off there. I don't mind the cover being battered and bashed because over time I'm probably going to end up spreading paint on the cover, making this more of an arty focus as well. That's really annoyed me that I've got that glue on there. I can rub it with a bit of isopropyl alcohol afterwards and wipe that off, which is what I will probably do. I'm just making sure all of these corners are completely embedded. Right, so the corners are on. They're thinking about themselves at the moment. Just, just squeeze them down by pressing them on the table. So this has got quite a thick cover, so it's not like a journal that I've made the cover for out of some gel prints. So I just want to make sure it's fully embedded. Right. There you go. So all on there. As I said, I don't mind a little bit of glue. This this whole cover is probably going to be over time painted on it's it's one of the things i want to do with this this whole journal is very often when i'm doing gel prints i will end up with scraps of gel prints and i put them in the drawer expecting to use them and occasionally i do use them but if i've got pages in here i've got spare paint say i'm doing a gel printing session or i'm painting a project any paint that's left over can now be used in this journal Anything on my gel plate I could possibly clean up onto something in here. Any spare scraps of gel, gel press or um, tissue or wallpaper or anything like a scrap could be used in here. So it's going to be, basically it's going to be my dump art journal. That's what I'm going to call it, I think. The one where I just dump all the stuff that doesn't belong anywhere else. So, right, we've got that done. The cover is now reinforced. I've got the outside sorted out. What I want to do now is I want to put a piece of fabric now. This is just a piece of fabric. It's a bit thicker than maybe a pillowcase, but at the end of the day, as you can see, it's just a piece of linen. That's the thing why I should call it really. I want to make sure it's not too tall. I don't necessarily need it sticking out the top. I would like it to go the whole height of the spine though. Now this is just here just to reinforce one more time um, these hinge areas. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to use Fabri-Tac because obviously fabric is in, in the ingredient here. And I'm going to put fabric there and I'm going to put fabric down the grooves there. And then once it's in place, I'll then glue down the either sides and we can then let that, let that sit while I go on to the next stage of this. So I'm going to be reasonably liberal with my Fabri-Tac. And I'm gonna make sure I've got the top edges done. And as I said, I wanna make sure that I put glue down into those areas there, which are the hinges for this. Now, if I don't want my glue to show through, which I don't really care on this, I'm just going to wipe it around my finger so that it's a thinner, a thinner covering. It will still be equally as sticky. It just means that it won't or it shouldn't bobble through. Right, so just pressing that down. I'm going to run my thumb down here just to make sure I've got that fully into the groove. I can use a bone folder if I want, 
just to make sure that that's down there. And I know I sound like I'm being really picky about this, but this is one of the reasons I'm doing this is to strengthen that area. An air bubble in there. Now, the little bit at the top, I don't care. Over time, that will fray and look aesthetically nice. Let's put it that way. So I'm now going to, about there, put a line of the Fabri-Tac down here. Um, I could cover the insides here if I wanted, but when I looked at this, I went, you know, they're in really good condition anyway. Why would I bother? And maybe over time, as you can see, I've already started, I will stick down um, bits of spare um, gel prints. Right, now we're doing one set at a time, so just make sure this is all down in contact. My, my bone folder's getting sticky. Right, I think that'll be okay. As I said, worst thing that happens, it peels up. I'll just stick it back down again. But I think that's okay. I feel that's going to be all right. The reason I'm doing this first is I want to give this maximum drying time while I actually prepare the signatures. Now, fabric tag does take a few minutes to dry but it's not going to take forever to dry, so just make sure it's nicely pressed down. So what this has done then is it's reinforced this whole area here. I'm just pressing it so I can get it all the way down. Um, it'll make it really strong then and it will, it will do the test of time. And if I've done my job properly, this might even outlive me. So, right. I'm excited about this. I, I just wanted a place where I don't control things as much. I just basically want to throw stuff onto a page. I mean, I, as you know, I'm a fan of Darcy Sanders and I love the way Darcy just does it. I mean, another one is Fran Baker. Fran Baker just goes for it. She experiments, she does stuff. And I'm always probably a little bit more controlling but then that's my nature and I can't help it. That just is the way I am. Right, I'm gonna put this to one side. I'm gonna leave it open so that it's got some air to it and we'll get back to this in a second. So, I've been collecting brown bags for quite a while now because I fully intended to do like a brown bag junk journal and I may still do it because I've got quite a few here. Now, we don't usually get a lot of brown bags here in Britain. Um, unless you go and buy them from a craft store, which I didn't want to do. So I've been accumulating them, should we say. Um, I'm guessing that's got to be in America. So when I go to the States, if I buy anything and it comes in a brown bag, I say, oh, there you go. I think, yeah, that's got to be an American one. Or is it? Yeah, I'm sure that's an American one. Um, and when I was in the States last year, funny story, really short, funny story. I was in this one store and um, the sales assistant was talking to me and she was very complimentary about my accent and basically she just wanted to hear me talk more because she liked my accent. And when she gave me my bag with stuff in, so it was this one, I went, oh, that's really nice. That's another one for my collection. And she started asking me what I did and she said, what do you mean for your collection? I went, well, I'm trying to build up some so I can do journals. So bless her heart. She gave me about five of them. I went, there you go, take these with you. So I was like, oh, love you for that. So I'm going to make these into my journal pages. Let's see, I've got, I think these are the ones she gave me actually. Now they don't all have to be the same size. Um, sorry if this is moving stuff around. I'm trying to get stuff that might be, is that too big? Mm, I can get away with that. I mean, I don't, I'm gonna put the cover up there actually as a reference point. I don't mind them being different sizes. In fact, it might be nice to have different sizes. Because I think this one, this size might be a bit small. But I can stagger them within the journal, so that's a definite. I've got several of these. That one looks quite big, that can go up there. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. 
let's keep these two and I'll do that junk journal one day using um, using brown bags. Right now I need to prepare these brown bags. So I want to split them so that I've just got the brown bag section of it. And I think probably the quickest way is just to go along these with a scissors. I mean, I have my guillotine out, but I'm not sure I'd be able to get my guillotine through some of these. I'm not sure I'm going to get the scissors through some of these, actually. And it's not my aim to make a really neat and tidy journal, um, art journal, although I'm almost certain it's probably going to be as, as neat as I can make it because it's my nature to make things neat and lined up and tidy, but it's not... It's not my sole intent to do so. So I'm just going to get one of these deconstructed. Then I'm going to pause the video and then I will come back. Right, these bits here I'm going to keep because I might use them for something in the future. They in themselves could be reinforcement for something. So what am I up to? I don't mind that. So if that gets folded, that's a reasonable size. Right, the handles are going to have to go. So I reckon if I tear this bit of paper off, I can almost guarantee every one of these pages is going to get gessoed. I don't want to do with these. I'll put them to one side. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll occur to me at some point. So every one of these pages is going to be gessoed at some point or collaged upon or it's going to be reinforced in some way anyway. Because, yes, these brown bags are a bit robust. But from what I'm probably going to end up doing on them, I don't know how robust they're going to need to be. So, and again, I don't care. Right. Do I need that gone? Maybe I need that gone. Do I need that gone? Sorry, I'm busily talking about myself here. Right. I think, let's just tear this down. And tear this with the ruler, it's probably easier than wielding a scissors. Right, so if I fold this in half, so this one's a smaller page. And as I said, I don't mind smaller pages. And this one would be a slightly bigger page. Do I worry about this edge? No, I don't worry about that edge. So this is about the size of this signature using those. So if I bring the cover back in, so you can see they're going to be a little bit small in there. However, if I stagger them before I sew them in, it'll give me the option that when I actually put the stuff in there, I could do stuff there that complements here. Now, I'm going to make two signatures and I'm going to put one either side so that it's not one big bulky signature in the middle. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through I'm going to prepare all of the rest of these brown bags. Then I'm going to come back to you. OK, um, I'm going to make a decision as I'm doing this, whether I've got enough as well, because, as I said, I want to do two signatures and I'm not I don't know how big one signature is going to look. So give me two seconds and I'll be right back. So here we are all cut and done. Now, I have to admit, when I started cutting the second one, second bag, I suddenly had one of those light bulb moments. So I just want to share it with you because you may have been shouting at the screen at me, but I didn't hear you. OK, I needed to cut the bags differently. So where the thing is at the bottom, if I cut this along here, so I'm cutting one side of the base and this enabled me to have taller pages. Then if I fold this out so I can get hold of this, and I cut the other side. Then I open this up and cut off this here. Hopefully this is all making sense. And remove the same side there. So basically I've just removed the base of the bag. Okay, the bottom of the bag. What that then gives me is the ability to utilize the gussets. So if I then come in and cut along the gusset, and I cut along this gusset, I then have 
taller pages. So I've still kept the shorter ones, don't worry, I've not got rid of those. So let's put the scissors on the side, that can go into the drawer for reinforcements. So I just quickly do this and I want to show you then what I had to do to actually make it work. Now I'm not overly worried about this looking rough along the edge because as I said I'm going to be covering these with paint and mixed media stuff and gesso and and anything I feel fit on the day to be using to be honest with you. Right, out of the way. Just remove these. I'm being a little careful about how I pull these off because I don't really want to rip a hole in the in the page but then a hole in the page can be repaired anyway. This is a whole new way of working for me. I'm, I'm channeling my Darcy Sanders here because goodness knows I don't normally do stuff like this and maybe that's that's the reason I need to be doing it. So that gave me taller pages. I folded these in half. I would if the other side of the thing had lifted up. Folded it in half. There. Did the same again. It would be up to you as to which direction you fold them in. This just made sense to me. Let's pull in my cover. Let's pull my signatures out of here. And then what I did was I looked at, oh, I can probably do both at the same time, to be honest. Let's work smarter, not faster, or whatever the word is. So here we go. So I've got this. So I'm just going to come along the top now. I'm just going to tear this off just shy of the top. Now, it also depends on how you fold them as to how far your pages go out. And I'm tearing across the bottom. I would say keep these pieces because if you want to hinge flips, flaps or flops into them, you can. Now, this one didn't need shortening, but these bigger bags did. So all I did is I laid my signature down, put my ruler and I tore off the excess. So let's just add one of these to each of these. And I think, I have to do a quick count in a second, I think each of these then ended up with seven, maybe, sets of pages. Now, I want to show you a couple of things I made a decision on. I put the biggest, softest bag on the outside, and I put, this was the toughest of the bags, on the inside. Okay, I just thought if I got that down short enough. Yes, it will have. It'll be fine. Um, so we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So when you reckon that's seven sheets of paper, that's 14, that's 28 sides. 28 and 28 are, oh, good grief, I can't add that up. 54? 54. So that's 54 pieces of art, and I think. Once, once they're in there and they've been arted upon, I think that'll be fine. Right, next I need to sew these together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go across and dig up my sewing stuff. I thought I pulled it out and I can't see it around me. So bear with me, we're going to do a really quick three-hole pamphlet stitch on here just to hold them all together. So Please, if you know what the three-hole pamphlet stitch is, just jump ahead to the next section after the pamphlet stitch. Back in two seconds, just need to find my supplies. Right, all sorted. It's been a bit of a funny old day for me today. Um, I've been renting a storage unit for, like, when, when we went into the pandemic. Um, as a lot of you may know, I basically lost my cake business. My cake decorating business went downhill. Um, I actually use that colour instead. And I put my cake decoration, basically all of my equipment, all the stuff I used to teach with, everything went into a storage unit. And this this is some time ago now, as you can imagine. And what happened after that, so just sort of about the clattering, just getting some bulldog clips out. And so everything's in that storage unit. And now my life has changed so considerably that I don't do cake anymore and yet I'm paying for all of my cake stuff to be in storage. So I made the decision to clear out my storage unit and of course that comes with 
a lot of emotional baggage of going through stuff that I've had for years and and all the mem memories with it. So it's it's been a hard day. Well, it's been a hard week because I've been going through storage, sorting stuff out because by um, not having the storage anymore, it frees up. Well, I'm paying £142 a month for the storage unit, which is probably about $150 a month. Um, let me just clip this. So I'm clipping this top and bottom, just hold all the pages tight to tight to the spine here. Um, and when you reckon that's that's on average about and that's not even a month, that's every four weeks is the way that the storage unit people go. So I've spent about one thousand five hundred pounds a year keeping stuff that I actually probably am never going to use again. So I made the decision to get rid of all of it except the essentials, which I would need to be able to decorate a cake for myself or do a magazine article or do a display piece. But all of the class supplies, everything. Anyway, just to say the least, I've been going through getting rid of them and it's been a bit of an emotional journey. And I was doing a bit more of that this morning, which has sort of thrown me into a bit of a tailspin. I'm not feeling as organised as I would normally. Right. I bulldog clipped the top and the bottom just to hold the pages in situ. This is an all, an AWL is for piercing holes. I'm just going to come in and I'm going to close the signature. A signature is a number of pages folded in half and I'm going to pop a hole through the middle, I'm not measuring. I'm literally just making a hole and then about an inch down from the top. Oops, don't slip to the side and about an inch up from the base. That's because I do know there's a couple of shorter pages in here. Now, as I work in this, I do know that I'm going to potentially be gluing stuff across pages. So I could effectively be strengthening the binding anyway, which is why I'm not overly concerned at the current about this being so secure. Sorry, I only hit a half lump there. Right, that should have gone through everywhere. Now... Um, I'm going to use waxed linen thread only because I've got a lot of waxed linen thread. You could use floss for this, like embroidery floss. I've done this in twine before now. I'm going to get three lengths. And I'm going to, as you can see, I'm sort of doing a mass make thing here. I'm doing two at the same time. Two, three. Purely because it makes sense to do them at the same time. So, right, where's that needle gone? Um, can't pick it up. I'm just using, this is just a large eyed needle. Let's find the end of this. Now I'm doing a basic three hole pamphlet stitch. Um, there are many versions of doing pamphlet stitches. Um, this is just the way I do it. It's one of two ways I do it actually. It's, it's up to you how you do them. Um, if you see someone doing it in a different manner, they're not wrong, I'm not wrong. We're just doing it our own way. I can see I'm going to be picking at this, aren't I? So. Sorry, I just had to do that. Now, I'm going to go from the outside to the inside. And I'm doing it this way purely because... Oh, get it all the way through the page. This would be good, Griffiths. Oh, where's that hole gone? I know there is one. I can see it. There you go. Um, I'm going from the outside to the inside, purely so that the knot will be on the outside of the signature. And then it won't really get in the way of my binding. So I've gone through the middle, come back out the top. I'm going all the way down to the bottom. Going straight back through. I would if I could find the hole. Come on, I know there's a hole there. There you go, in you go. Now, the only thing you have to be slightly careful of, we've got enough thread. There's the unwrap. Pull this up, I need less thread on the outside, more on the inside. All you have to be careful of here is you're going to go back out this way. You need to be careful you're not going through the thread you've just sewn, because if you do that, you're not going to be able to tighten this up. So as you can see there, I was going through the thread so if I pull the thread out of the way, I should be, there you go, I can feel it's right. So I'm going to pull the thread through, let's 
take the needle off. Let's thread the next needle just so that I've got more of a chance of finding the needle if I put it down somewhere really bizarre. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the clips off because if I tighten this up with the clips in place, it, it will not help me. So as you can see, I've got the thread at the back and I've got the thread either side. I'm going to give this a little bit of a tug. I don't need it so tight that it actually rips my pages because remember, these are only brown paper bags. So I'm going to tie it three for good luck because that's just the way my anxiety wants it done. You could tie it in a bow if you want. Or threads, I'll throw them into a box and then they can be used for tops of tags. And there you go, that's one signature done. So I'm going to do the same thing again on this one. So I'd recommend you fast forwarding through this unless you want to see me struggle doing this one more time. So I'm going to go from the outside to the inside. I would if I could find the hole. There you go, outside to the inside. Pull it through so I've got a tail. Go from the inside to the outside. I go all the way. Actually, let's show you. Can I show you both ways? Yes. OK, that was one version. Let's show the other version. So I've gone from the outside to the inside all the way to the top. I'm going to hold this out. I'm going to go back through the middle hole. So this is the other version of a pamphlet stitch for three. And then I'm going to go to the bottom hole. And go out through that one. Then when I'm here. Get that out stuck in there. Um, I then take the thread and I go under the top one. So again, we have got thread on both sides of this line. I'll just stick that in the box so I don't lose it. I don't want to lose a needle because I don't want my dog to actually find it. Get rid of those. So this is the other version, and then that's the same as I've done before. Give it a bit of a tighten, give it one knot just to tighten it up a bit. Remember, don't yank on it so hard that you end up tearing the pages. It's not irretrievable if you do that, but it's probably best not to do it in the first place. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail on there. Let's put those in the box. So as you can see now, this is all sewn together. Now, as I work, I could possibly glue across that and it becomes one double spread. So just know that it's nice and secure. These are both now my signatures, and we're now going to work on the cover again. So here I'm back again. Just wanted to tidy up the decks as I go along, because that way I can have some space, because this is a reasonably large thing to be moving around. Right, I've decided this was my front, because I don't know why, I just like, I like the shape of that. It was a lot more interesting than that, so for me this is the front. This is pretty much dry, I would imagine, so this is like a sandwich. We've got the original spine, then we've got the reinforcement card. Then I've got this linen or this piece of fabric over the top. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to put eyelets into this. I'm notoriously bad at doing eyelets, but I'm willing to make a fool of myself on screen because why wouldn't I? We're all friends here. So I'm just going to get a smaller ruler. That'll be about right, I think. Right, I'm not really going to measure. I basically want eyelets in two places. So I'm going to come in, just grab myself a pen if I can, and just put two dots in here. And I'm only using this little ruler purely because it means they're equally spaced dots. Um, because this is like a no so elastic um, binding system, the elastic's going to move anyway, and, and I just want the holes roughly spaced in the same place. Now, I don't have one of those fancy um, eyelet cutters. I have one of these, which I've had for a long time. I don't know where it came from. Be nice if I did have a fancy one, but I don't. So I'm just going to eyeball this now. I only have the option of one size hole with this. I do know if you've got one of the fancier ones, you can actually get... Two, two sizes of all. I've only got the one hole and I'm hopefully it's going to go through this. So I'm going to come in. Are we in shot? We are. And I'm going to line this up just so that dot. Yay, it went through. Right, is the dot is just on the outside. There's one thing I don't like about this. It's the fact that the 
stuff doesn't drop back out, you're going to dig it out. But it is quite a strong one. Right, I'm going to do the same again. So I'm trying to see through my iPad. I'm trying to line the holes up roughly with each other, just for aesthetics. Now, if, if this happens where your little bit of fabric hasn't come through entirely, just go in and give it a little bit of a haircut. Let's get this out of here so I can do the other one, the other end. So, yeah, eyelets, I use eyelets occasionally, I must admit. I think it's because my success rate with eyelets is not great. And because I struggle, I tend not to do things. Because if I'm, if I'm struggling with something, it'll take me more time to actually rectify the problem than it will doing it correctly in the first place. So that's, that's probably why I struggle. So where's this? And about there we'll do. Um, remember, this is for me, guys. It's certainly not for anything else. Right, that's all of that out. I didn't need to give too many haircuts. I'm quite happy about that little bit there, could have with a snip there. So I pop the holes through there. Now I'm setting this with eyelets. I suppose you could do it without eyelets, but be aware that over time the holes will probably get torn. So where's my eyelets gone? Right. Um, mixed bag of eyelets. Let's go with the goldy ones. Should we do gold? I wonder whether the gold. This could go terribly wrong and I may have to have a plan B and dig, dig the ones out that don't work. But let's be positive about this today, Griffith, shall we? Right, now I'm, I've been told that the ring there is where my eyelet sits. So it sits like that. Let's hope the person who told me that is correct. So I'm going to drop my eyelet into the hole. like so. And then that bit there is going to sit, I'd like to do it the other way up to be honest. I have far more success if it's up the other way. Right. And then one good hard press. See it always does that. Right, I'm going to put them all in and then I'm going to go back with a little hammer and rectify that. I don't know why it does that to me. Um, It just is. Sometimes it works perfectly. And sometimes like that, it doesn't. Right, I will have to sort that out in a minute. But I've only got the one cover, so we're dealing with it. Come on, in you go. I know there's a hole, I've just made one. See, every single time it does this, it only bends half of it and then I have to go in. Have I got the pliers? I've still got the pliers. And I have to bend the other half up. Right. So excuse me while I rectify this. So basically what I have to do is I have to fold these back with a pair of pliers and then go back in and squish them again. And this is why I get really frustrated doing eyelets. As far as I'm concerned, I'm doing it right. It just doesn't seem to like me. But where there's a will, there's a way. Is that all the way through? See, it's sort of... Sorry guys, you shouldn't be seeing me struggle like this, but I have learned over time that taking the struggles out is not helpful because people need to see that things go wrong. Well, they don't need to see things. Things sometimes go wrong. I'm sure I'm gonna have a whole load of comments going, Kerry, have you tried this? Kerry, have you tried that? And I'll be grateful for them, I promise you. It's just frustrating that it just doesn't always work where it's supposed to. That was Kerry, Kerry's angry voice, that was. That's those two sorted out. Well, I suppose you didn't expect to see me struggling with this today, did you? But you know what? It's real. 
that's what I try to do on my channel. I try to keep things real. Right, one more to go. So there you go. So you can see why I get frustrated with eyelets. That wasn't an intentional tutorial, I can assure you. But that's what happens to me almost constantly with eyelets. And I've tried turning things up the other way. I've tried buying different size eyelets. That's just, it just always happens. And it's kind of important that the eyelets are lying flat because if they don't, what happens is they could cut your elastic. And after this much effort, I don't want the elastic to be cut. Right. Yeah, right, those are smooth. Yeah, you won't be seeing me doing eyelets for a while, I feel. That just shows you how frustrating it can be. Right, eyelets are in, they're in set, top and bottom, not a problem now. So, next thing we need to do is I now need to put the elastic in there. Now, in this country, I know this as shirling elastic. Um, it's basically round elastic. I know some places who sell um, traveler's notebooks will sell kits where there is this. It comes in different widths. I've got a really wide version as well. So just know that it's out there. Um, you can, however, do this with a non-stretchy item. I just like to use a stretchy one. I'm only having two threads, so I'm going to go out through the top, back in through the top. That gives me my first, first straight I'm going to come out through the bottom, back in through the bottom. Now, you want this to be tight enough that it's going to hold stuff in place. But you don't want it so tight that it's going to tear stuff. So I'm going to cut a piece of that off. Now, I tend to play around with the tautness of this for a little while. And that will be dependent on what product you're using and how tight it feels. At the end of the day, I can always undo the knot and tighten it more if I find over time that it's loose. See, that? that's fine with me. I'm going to work the knot down a little. Actually, I'm just going to trim that little bit off there. So that's given me that. Now, the simplicity of this is you then open this up to the centre. And you come in, you thread it through there, open this up to the centre, thread it through there. And I've now got my new art journal. And it's an art journal I totally mean to just dump stuff in. I mean, I could, I mean, I could even use, you know, my hundred perpetual prompts that I put out there. I could use this to do projects. But when you reckon now, I can come in, I can work with it in situ. I can take these out and work with them and put them back in. It just means I've got something. All this has cost me is the four corners, a bit of glue, and the four eyelets. Everything else was free or recycled in some way. So there you go. I think that's a wonderful little make. I'm going to look forward to using that. You might actually see me do something like this in a video. I mean, as far as the cover's concerned, it'll probably end up with covered with paint, because knowing me, I'll test stencils or something out on it. So, um, unfortunately, the eyelets sort of held us up a little bit, but hopefully it wasn't too much for you to bear. Um, thank you very much, guys. That's This is going to be my dump journal, I think. I'm just going to dump ideas, dump dump spare stuff like paint or I can see I'm going to go through this and take all of these off aren't I I can say my nature is just to keep things tidy um but it it's just a case of I can just do stuff in this I'm looking forward to that just being able to play with no consequences it's going to be nice so enough of me gassing on here I'm Kerry the Crafter that's C-E-R-I the Crafter until next time goodbye now